What's up guys, welcome back to the boat. Today we've got a pretty awesome video as you can probably tell by the title. We're gonna go through the baddest boat money can buy. In my opinion, we just got set up, first day out in the new boat. This is my Lund 219 GL. This is my fifth year now running this exact boat. Um, some really cool features about it I wanna run through with you guys. We got some cool electronic stuff this year. We've got an amazing floor we're gonna get to um, and some really cool stuff and this is by far the sickest boat I've ever owned. But we're gonna start, I guess, right here at the council. And one change I made from last year is I decided I wanted to get a 15 inch screen in here on my dash. Um, I, last year I had two 12s and I look at the, these screens a lot when I'm standing on the back deck. And I did want something a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see from the back deck when I'm fishing back there. So I went with a 15 here on the top. It was a tight fit, we made it fit. Um, that's all good there and we went with the 12 down below again um, for when I'm trolling or when I'm sitting here in my captain's chair I like to be able to have my double graph side imaging or you know mapping or generally the two screens I have rolling but this fits really nice it's tight it's clean everything looks good um, and another thing we did this year which last year I had a jack plate as well from TNH but this year I did a bigger one it had a 10 inch reset this year and then I also put in the blinker switches so right here I've got my jack plate and my trim right at my fingertips here while I'm running the jack plate for me is huge. Um, I love the ability to raise and lower my motor outside of just my trim, especially in the big water. Now we, motored, we mounted my engine itself as low as possible on the jack plate. And what that allows me to do is when we get in these really big waves and big water out in Green Bay and Lake of the Woods and stuff like that, it allows me to sink that engine down as low as possible. And then that keeps the boat as steady as we possibly can as well so that we're not getting beat up by all the waves. So that's huge. Um, and then we actually made a little custom fit for the gauge right here in the dash. We'll show you guys that so that I can always see it. It's right here at my eyes and I don't have to be looking around looking at the red tape or yellow tape um, behind me in the boat. So that was a, a really cool feature and something that I'm really, really excited about. We got the trim tabs again, absolute must have for running big water again. Trim tabs just help you control your bow. I generally run those all, you know, all the way down and really bury that bow so you're not getting all that bow slap because this 219 what i love about it is it has such a big front deck but when it comes to rough water that can hurt you just as far as the ride so the trim tabs really getting to bury that bow down in those big waves the trim tabs are an absolute must have so this year again i went with the same seat configuration i have a big captain's chair here with my armrest and then i've got the built-in suspension seat but I just do one of these um, two years ago I did two of them and it just ended up being they took up too much space here in the cockpit so I have one of the standard lunch chairs and I've got the one big captain's chair here for your boy because I basically live in this thing for the next nine months um, but love the feel of this super comfy uh, I can really lean her back if I need to have a, I'm having a lazy day but it's a really cool setup I love the chair um, throttle right here kicker controls right here all good to go my full switch panel and just a really clean layout here on my dash. These wires here are for a little trolling configuration I'll show you guys here one of these days, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Those are gonna come into play a lot for us this season as well. And of course, just to top it off, we do have a radio here. Now, let's take you guys to the back of the boat where all the business happens. All right, so we're here on the back deck and the first thing you guys are gonna notice is this flooring. Now, this is my new Aqua Traction floor. And I'm super excited about this just due to the fact that we got rid of all of the carpet in this boat. There's not a single piece of carpet in this whole thing. The guys tore everything out, Aftec did all my lids, and then we threw some aqua traction on top of it. And I got another video that I'm going to post here going through this whole entire process because it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, but this aqua traction is so awesome. It cleans up really nice. There's no mess with carpet. It's just super easy to clean. And one thing I really like about it too is if you look, this is the memory foam stuff. You've got a ton of cushion and padding here. So when I'm musky fishing or fishing all day, I've got all this cushion. You can really feel it in your feet and in your back as well. And that's just gonna make those long days that much easier out on the water. The cool thing about it too, is we actually have the aqua traction here on top of my just in case box. Now this is a product that I have had in every single boat I've owned, every single year I've owned a boat. And I will never own a boat without a just in case box. The storage solutions that Bob comes up with for these is just absolutely incredible. They're known for being a musky box company and honestly, there's so many applications to it. In this particular case, I have all kinds of walleye tackle in here. And this is a super simple way to store all your tackle. Um, he's got lift outs that go in here for musky baits themselves. Right now, I just have a ton of planos in here for all of my walleye baits. But latches, super nice. You can stand obviously on top of it 
and they're just made super, super well. Bob's been in business for over 15 years now out of the Twin Cities. Everything's handmade, one by one, custom fit for your boat in particular. Now, we did take out the side pods in this boat, and reason being was to get this box stretched all the way across. I think this thing's 89 inches wide. Just a ton of storage, and then later on this year, Bob's building me another one right now that we're gonna lay across the middle here as well. So we're gonna have all kinds of musky bait storage for this fall, and then a massive rear deck for all kinds of activities, right? Going back, uh, we've got just our standard live well here in the center. We've got a trash, a really nice trash bin. I love that Lund puts that in there. In the back right corner, some tool holders, and then just another port here to get to a lot of your pumps and your wiring for running your electronics. But when we go to the back, we'll see the 300 Pro XS. Now, this engine I had last year was the first year I had it, and I knew I absolutely wanted it again. Now, Mercury did call the 400 V10 this year. For me, I didn't want a first year engine, um, but also, the 300 does everything I need and more. The really cool thing I like about this engine, it just has a ton of torque, and even a big 22 foot boat like this, that 300 snaps it out of the hole and it's super fuel efficient. For being someone who my biggest expense in my business is fuel and gas. And for me, a 300 just takes a little bit less fuel, more fuel efficient, and I've still got all the power and plenty of speed. My top end with this boat is gonna be between 56 and 57 miles an hour. And the beauty of this as well is I can run 87 in this engine, right? That saves me over a dollar a gallon at the pumps as well versus running the Verado. So absolutely love the 300. It is technically an underpowered boat, but trust me, there's more than enough power here. I don't care if I've got three, four customers in the boat, plus myself, all my tackle, this thing snaps out of the hole, and it also saves a good amount of money on the sticker price as well. I absolutely love that thing. Like I said, that's hooked up to a 10 inch uh, TNH jack plate in the back. Now, if you look, my kicker is on my starboard side, and this is something that a lot of people ask me questions on because basically all your boats you see, the kicker is rigged on the port side. The reason I like it on the starboard side, it gives me all the room in the world over where I fish in my corner for figure eighting fish, for landing fish, all that. I want that kicker on the other side. It doesn't need to be in my way. This here is a 15 horse pro kicker from Mercury. Great kicker. It's got all the power I need for even trolling into three, four foot waves. I can do plenty of speed if I need to do some speed trolling, five, six miles an hour, stuff like that. Um, but just a super good system. We got that on the tie rod. And then obviously our controls are right up here in the front. Sticking in the back, we've got our GPS puck for our trolling motor, and then also we have a Hummingbird heading sensor. And the heading sensor is something that's really cool. Um, basically, once you calibrate it, it'll show you exactly which way your boat is positioned. So generally, say if you're drifting sideways on a drift, your, the arrow on your boat's gonna show, be pointed in the direction that you're moving, whereas the heading sensor itself will show you that your boat's actually sideways and drifting with the wind. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you don't have any landmarks, you've got certain waypoints on your graph that you need to cast to, you can make that cast a lot more accurately, knowing exactly how your boat's positioned, and it's a $100 accessory that is just awesome and I put on all of my boats. One of my favorite things about the Lund system, Lund boats, is the sport track. Now this sport track is this black piece here that allows me to put a ton of accessories in here. Now, I've got four foot tracks mounted on here for all my trolling uh, stuff. And it, it's really cool because it eliminates me having to put any holes in the fiberglass itself. It's rock solid, super sturdy, and it just is a, a great feature that you don't have to drill any holes. You can take it on and off regardless on the time of year or season that you might particularly need. But the sport track system is awesome. Now, let's flip over to the grass because I do get a ton of questions on these. Um, I've got two Hummingbird Solix 12s here in the back, and these are basically gonna be my side imaging and my 360 imaging units. Now, I'm always fishing in this back corner. I always run a foot pedal just so that I can be fishing hands-free at all times. And the mounts with these is it's actually a Cisco plate here in the back with a 42 degree offset, and then a short E-size ram ball, the biggest one you can make and then going to our gimbals. I do get the wrench from Ram Mount just to get these things locked down super tight because we do deal with a lot of wind and big waves. But once you lock those down with that short wrench, you can't move these things, they're super solid. So love having these in the back. The 212s are great. Um, they're not too big, but also I can see them while I'm standing up. The picture's plenty big. I have had 15s in the past and they just got a little bit bulky. Um, and then this year we went down to just two graphs in the back versus last year we had three. Just to kind of, you know, clean everything up a little bit, a little bit smaller station back here. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that goes on here in the back of the boat, but love that Cisco mount. And then also I can still run all my trolling stuff in my track 
and then these Cisco mounts go into my sport track itself so it's not eating up any of the room in my track so I can have all my rod holders in there at the same time and still keep my graphs here in the back. All right, one thing that I did in the back of the boat that I thought was really cool and unique and I worked with Aqua Traction was with was covering the back of my boat here with Aqua Traction. Now, generally if I'm fishing or netting fish in the fall or spring, I do like to put a foot back here, but in the past it's always got really icy and even slippery during the summer just being straight fiberglass with water. But now with the Aqua Traction on here, I have no problem putting a foot back here, netting a fish, and feel totally comfortable back there where in the past you didn't want to take the wrong step, right? And also with the aqua traction on all the gunnels, it's going to protect any scratches. I love to put my foot up here kind of as a rest for my legs as I'm fishing. Love to put a foot up, but now with this aqua traction padding on here, don't have to worry about scuffing or you know scraping any of my fiberglass and keeping it super clean. All right, last thing here in the back I almost forgot is our batteries here in the back for our starting battery and our house battery. Now, I just have a standard starting battery in here, your lead acid battery, um, just due to some mercury warranty stuff. Dakota is getting their batteries cleared here very soon by mercury so you can run a Dakota lithium starting battery. Um, but as of for right now, I just have a standard stock battery in here. And then I do run that 12 amp, 200 amp, or two, 12 volt, I'm sorry, 200 amp hour house battery from Dakota lithium. This thing is an absolute beast. Took it out of my last boat put it in this boat it's going to charge and power all the graphs that I could possibly need and then some right um, even I couldn't kill that thing last year I never got a single low voltage warning even last year running five graphs um, so that thing is an absolute workhorse if you need a house battery have any issues with graphs dying that battery will solve all of your problems all right so here we're in the passenger seat this is like I said just the standard seat from one um, there's not a whole lot going on over here but there's something really cool that I added on now the beauty of the dash on my passenger side is it has this kind of rim around the edge and I can throw a ton of stuff up there and being, I basically live in this thing and then I get customers that come in here for the day. The problem that I didn't like with the passenger side dash is it was just flat. There's absolutely no rim around it. So I talked to Nate from Aftec and we talked about this 12 mil aqua traction and basically what he did is just routed out the, the inside of it and gave me a really nice rim. So if you want to throw anything up here like your phone, it's got an edge here where it can't fall off. In the past, you'd set a phone up here, you'd hit a wave, it would slide down here, you hit another wave, your phone's down there. And it just made for a total mess. So this thing is gonna solve a lot of issues. I'm gonna put battery packs up here as well for charging GoPros while we're filming. And then Nate had the great idea too of putting these two little cuts in here. If you get any rainwater that would spray in here or any oversplash so that this thing would drain out and it's never gonna hold water, right? And aqua traction is also a closed cell. Uh, material so you don't have to worry about that as well but this thing is super simple but something that i'm really going to like and a super simple add-on that is going to just be great for this season now right below that we have the glove box and this thing it blows people away every time i open this thing up because you could fit a small child in this thing it's absolutely huge one thing that i make and i've had this brought it from all of my other boats is i made a little custom tray here this just came out of a tote i marked it off and just cut it with a sawzall and then put these two little trays in here as well. Now, I've got just about anything and everything you could need in here. Here's that ram wrench, all your little odds and ends, a scale, uh, we've got sun gators, we've got the real important stuff here, right? Anything I need, I just throw in here, it slides in super easy, super clean, and tucked away. Close the dash up, and you've got all kinds of storage in there. I love that, it's absolutely huge. Um, and then one just little storage bin here on the side. And you've got cup holders and whatnot and all the other stuff here as well. So let's hop on up to the front deck itself. All right, we are up here in the massive front deck and let's start with the Troy motor itself. I'm a huge Tarova guy, 112 US2, uh, 72 inch shaft is just the way to go for me. Super simple trolling motor, 72 inch shaft obviously for the big waves. And then that 112 36 volt system is a must have for myself and this large of a boat. What I do put on is a quick attach plate. You gotta have one of those. Always have backup trolling motors at the house. Quick attach plates, on off, super simple swap. And then the cornfield uh, crappie mount, 360 mount as well. I absolutely love my 360. It's something that I will always have in my boats going forward. It's not really compatible with the Trova, but with that mount, you can make 360 work. I use it all your season long, regardless if I'm fishing for bass, walleyes, muskies. 360 is just such a great tool. All right, so. When I stow my trolling motor, this TH Marine troll timer comes back and locks right into place. Now this is rock solid, 
it's not going to move. When you put the added weight of this pole on here from your 360, there's a lot of weight. You can bounce the head of the troll motor right off your transom. So that troll tamer, very small item, but makes an absolutely huge difference on your wear and tear on your stuff throughout the season. The one very important thing I always make sure to do with this is make sure that the cab itself is pointed out. Now, if you look at this tab, this is the whole system that locks down my troll tamer. I always make sure this tab is out because if you're going to net a fish, you want that net to slide over top of it. If this tab was flipped around, you go to net a fish, you're gonna get stuck and then you're gonna lose your fish and then I get yelled at, right? So always make sure that that tab is pointed out. Now, one thing that Lund does too is they put these cargo nets in the side of the boat here and they've got these clips. I just take the cargo nets out. I think they kind of get in the way. Um, and I just keep the clips there to run my trolling motor cable from my trolling motor to the back of the boat. Kind of simple, easy, but just use the clips that are already in here and then run my trolling motor pedal all the way to the back. All right, up in the front here, we obviously have the aqua traction with the memory foam, which is just super soft and squishy. Um, and we have one of our massive storage compartments here. Now, this thing itself, I myself have fit in, closed the lid. It's absolutely huge. I can fit so much stuff in here. Obviously, I've just got some random stuff in here as of now, um, but I packed this thing the absolute brim, come musky season, and all that stuff. Now, you can see my, my aftermarket Aftec lids are all report. Nate did a great job of that. Even made them a little bit thicker so that they're a little bit stiffer. They've got a little bit more stability, and you don't have that player cushion in the lid itself. And you can see here as well just how thick that memory foam is on that aqua traction. Absolutely love it. We've got our rod buckles here on the side. I don't use them a whole lot, um, just due to the fact that my rods are super long. I use them here and there, but they are nice to have, so I wanted to put those back in. Nate mounted those back on top of my aqua traction. And then on the other side here, I just use this for life jackets. I always have to have a ton of life jackets for a lot of people in the boat, and then we have to have certain specific ones that are Coast Guard approved. So they take up a ton of space, but this compartment is basically strictly for life jackets. We've got six life jackets in there um, for any situation we might run into. All right, another compartment up in the front. This is basically just the cooler um, and the ice, whatever you want to call it, the front live well. Not something I use a whole lot of. Generally just throw planer boards or maybe a couple drinks in there, random stuff. I just throw a plug in it so you don't get any water in there and just adds for more storage on top of the boat. All right, we're gonna get into our rod locker here. And something that was really cool I had Aqua Traction do is put the Thorn Brothers logo into my rod locker itself. All my Thorn rods get stored in here. I can fit up to six 10 foot musky rods in this storage. It's absolutely insane. Um, so let's crack this thing open, show you guys the layout and what we got inside. All right, rod locker itself, full new Aftec lid, like everything else, and a compartment full of Thorn Brother customs, right? Now I said, I do pull the tubes out. If you guys can see in the front, I pull all the tubing out. It allows me to fit a lot more rods in. In the past, I could only get six 10 foot musky rods up there. Now, I don't know how many must 10 footers I'm gonna be fitting there, a lot. Um, but we've got, right now we've got nine trolling rods in there, and then we have eight spinning rods in there and plenty of room, four more rods itself. Now in the bottom, we've got our trolling motor batteries. These are the Dakota Lithium 135s. It is absolutely crazy that a battery this big can pack that much of a punch. These batteries are absolutely amazing for my trolling motor. They'll run me as hard as I want to go. Um, never let me down. Absolutely love those batteries. And the amount of weight that you cut out with using these lithium batteries as well is just absolutely insane. But the Dakota Lithium 135s, total powerhouse, amazing investment, 11 year warranty. They're just, I, I can't say enough good things about those batteries themselves. Absolutely love them. But this rod locker, massive. So I think we made it all the way around the boat, showed you guys some cool features. We do have a Dorado latch as well on the trailer. Must have for basically myself loading and unloading a boat every single day. Um, that's the best 300 bucks a guy can spend, let me tell you that. Uh, absolutely love that. And this whole boat is just laid out amazing. Super excited to throw some fish in this thing tonight. Gonna get after some walleyes and just absolutely stoked about it. So this boat will be for sale as well here at the end of the season. Um, I'll post, uh, or I should say put some details down in this description below if you guys wanna look at all the features and whatnot. But this boat will be for sale here at the end of the season. If one of you guys wanna buy the most badass rig money can buy.